What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're not working on the Audi. We gotta get this thing out of here and we gotta get the Bronco in here. Cause we got some nice improvements we gotta do on this thing. Quick little update on my Audi. This thing's almost ready to be a running and driving vehicle again. I just gotta get a couple little parts. I'm gonna order that and hopefully I can have a another running and driving car here soon. I was gonna go park this thing on the side of the shop where it should go, but we rolled the windows down last weekend with it hooked up to a battery charger. And now I can't get the battery to be charged enough to roll the windows up. So uh, I'm just gonna pull it out of the driveway. So hooked up to the wheeler, got no one here to steer. Now I'm just gonna send it on out of here. Get her. I'm trying to remember the last time I started this thing. I think it was, uh, I don't know, it's been a few weeks. Let's see if she'll fire up. Easy money. Cool. Oh, if only I could just drive on in. Wait a minute. This thing's like really close to being able to fit in the garage. So I think I'm gonna try something that I haven't never done before, at least while driving. I'm gonna air down these tires to like five or six PSI and uh, see if she'll fit in after that. I honestly don't think I've ever done this, done it this way because I've never had an air down tool like this before. Um, this thing takes the valve stem out. It makes it, it makes it really fast. All right, well I got this side down to like zero PSI basically. And uh, I still don't think it's gonna make it. Ah, it might, ooh, it might. For the sake of entertainment, I'm going to try it. Oh. That was impressive, and now I'm stuck though. But honestly, I could probably cut that arm, so I might do that real quick. Might back up the Bronco just a little bit and cut that arm. Alrighty, <laughs> I just very quickly cut that, rounded it off, so it shouldn't stab the truck this time. So let's get this thing in again. Mission successful, we got the Bronco in here on its tires, which is uh, really cool. So yeah, now that it's in here, let's talk about what we're gonna do today. 
So a buddy of mine hit me up and he told me he got another 351 engine for free. I gave him my other one that came with my free ZF5. He's also my buddy that helped me with my power stroke and my oil cooler problems. Uh, super cool dude. He's got a really sick OBS dually and he's got these engines to put in a bunch of other uh, old school drag cars, which is really cool. He got one um, and it was a truck one. So I had a bunch of accessories on it. So I went and grabbed all these accessories that he gave me for free. We got a throttle body complete with a throttle position sensor and a idle air control valve. Hopefully this fixes my idle issue. I got some injectors. We were both told that the truck had new injectors, but looking at this one that kind of fell out of the fuel rail, I think I had one new injector and six or seven original injectors. So I don't know if I'll swap this today because I don't know if they're new. I'll have to inspect and see what my injectors look like. I grabbed this AC compressor because it looks really new. So I might try and get AC working on this thing. I grabbed the intake manifold because we had to take it off anyways. I don't know if I'll run it. It's got some nicer vacuum ports, I think. So I might. And I got a power steering pump that doesn't look like it leaks. It just looks like someone has overfilled it a couple times. So we also got these super cool seats out of a Fox body Mustang. They're so 80s, 90s vintage vibe. I love them. Um, we're gonna talk about these here in a little bit. Right now, I wanna get the Bronco running properly, running and idling properly. Alrighty, we got the throttle body out. Everything is super warm, and as you guys noticed, I was able to disconnect this coolant line and have no coolant come out. So this is empty, this is empty. There's a little bit of coolant in here. So this thing's critically low on coolant. Comparing these two throttle bodies, these 351 parts came out of a newer OBS style, so they're a little bit more newer. There might be some differences. I already noticed a little bit. Like for example, this throttle body is labeled A and these throttles are labeled B. The idle air control valves are a little different, but this one looks newer. This one doesn't look, this one's got a factory Ford stamp on it. And I don't think this one, oh no, this one does. This one's newer though. I'm hoping this one's a little more advanced and idles better. The throttle position sensor looks uh, newer. Looks like it was replaced. So hopefully the, between these two, um, it'll be a better setup. So yeah, we're gonna slap this in, and I also need to make an EGR delete. So I'm gonna make a little block off plate real quick, but let's get this bolted back up and then do that. We got everything back together. Hopefully that EGT block off plate is uh, sealed tightly. Now we're gonna put some water in the radiator because this thing's bone dry and that's not good. And then we're gonna slap the intake on and see how she idles. Well, now it's arguably worse, so that's cool. That tells me, I think that tells me it is vacuum related though. Oh, you know what? I remembered something now. So I kind of forgot that I pulled this thing out once and it was idling super high and I noticed it was also kind of smoking. And I found this little valve behind the uh, intake manifold that is broken. So a hose can't go on it and it's a check valve of some sort. I think this comes directly off the manifold. We're gonna go over there and look. I think this is why it's, uh, I forgot about this, but I think that's why I have such a high vacuum leak. Let's check it out. All right, so here behind the intake manifold, we have this really big hose down here. 
which I believe, oh, this is a PCV hose. That comes off of this valve cover. And then this, yeah, has a 90 degree fitting right to the intake manifold. Honestly, I might just vent that to atmosphere and just cap this if I can get a cap in there. I'm gonna try that. Alrighty, I got a bolt shoved in that thing. Let's see if that made a difference. At this point, I think I'm gonna need a smoke machine. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so I'm tired of the Broncos idling issue, kicking my ass as usual. So I wanna move on to fun stuff like these seats. These seats are out of a Fox Body Mustang. It's actually really cool. I uh, bought this from a buddy of mine who we were friends with. I bought this from a buddy who I was friends with in junior high, and we became friends in junior high because. We both liked Fords, and now here we are, like 12 years later, I'm buying seats out of his Mustang to put into my Bronco. So, kind of a cool full circle moment. I really love the 80s, 90s vibes that these seats have. They're gonna fit so nicely in the Bronco. And they got some cool features too, because they're kind of GT Mustang seats. They have an adjustable thigh rest, as you can see, opened and closed, which is gonna be really cool for my tall ass. They have adjustable bolsters, which I've never seen before. You got a little knob on the side here that you can tighten the bolsters. You see how they're compressing in right now? Now they're like tight, pay attention like right here. And now you can expand them out a little bit. So if you got someone that's a little wider, they don't sit and you know destroy them. So that's really cool. One thing about these seats that I didn't really notice, my buddy told me about them, but I wasn't really like, I guess understanding what he was saying, which is fine. Um, these, seat, these Mustang seats, because they're out of a coupe, they just kind of fold in, and there's nothing stopping them from falling forward, which is odd. I don't know if I'm gonna like that while I'm wheeling, so honestly, I might just weld the hinge part of this and make it a fixed seat. And the coolest thing about these seats is they're gonna bolt right into my factory seat brackets. So, there's gonna be no modification whatsoever. Let's rip the Bronco seats out and get these installed on the seat brackets. Okay, so I lied, modification is required. We don't have a hole down here, but it shouldn't be too bad to drill out. We already have a kind of like a dimple here as a guide, so I'm gonna just make sure I have this tap for whatever size this bolt is. If I do, then I will uh, drill and tap this. Just like that, we got two bolts in on the one rail. So let's uh, do the same thing to this side real quick. Seat brackets are installed. Let's get this thing in the truck. Boom, here she is in here. As you can tell, it looks much better than the other seat. It sits higher, so I have a headrest. Top in it for the first time. Oh, oh. wow, it feels like a completely different truck in here. That's crazy. I like the bolsters. Yeah, I like the bolsters. I like the, the thigh extension thing. It's still not even like to my knees. But it's comfy. Oh yeah, and I got a headrest. That's been my biggest thing, is not being able to lean back. Oh yeah. I feel way more upright in this thing, and way more secure too. And the only thing is, you know, I won't be very secure when this comes with me. So we're gonna have to fix that, because that's a recipe for disaster right here. So we're definitely gonna have to weld these in place. But I think, honestly, welding them right here, Let's see. Seat belt up. Yeah, I think that'll do good. Now I just need a taller arm or a taller center console because I don't have my folding armrests on these. Sick. I wish they looked a little cooler in here. It's a little off with the tan, and this is like gray. Ah, I don't think it looks too bad in here. It's definitely just a little out out of place. All right, let's get the passenger seat out and on the bench. Sweet. Now let's get the bracket swapped over. Done. That one actually, the holes lined up on it, didn't have to drill and chap, so that was really nice. Let's get this thing in the truck now.
Alrighty, both seats are in. It looks really good. They fit really nice. They sit comfortably. I'm really happy with them. I'm excited to run these. I need to definitely get them welded. So I'm gonna drive around, make sure it's at the position I want before they become fixed. And uh, yeah, then I, now the next agenda is I need to get a really, really tall center console. So um, I'm either gonna be building a custom one or finding something off the shelf. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this one, unfortunately. I was hoping to make more progress on this. Once again, unsuccessful. Stay tuned, we gotta get this thing running because I wanna take it out on a couple more trips before the season's over, so. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll see y'all next week. Peace.